In this edition of Health Matters, we'll find out why dieting just doesn't work, gain some comedic insight on sleep apnea, learn how stem cells are helping diseased areas of the body, and discover some simple exercises you can do at your workplace. All this and more on Health Matters. Clearwater at Metabolics Wellness, where the focus is on health rather than disease. Explain why diets simply don't work. It's a pretty complex question because uh, you know there's a lot of money spent on dieting. There are a lot of programs out there. There are a lot of theories on on dieting, uh, but we try to stick to the basics. You know, one of the things that can happen is uh, you know a lot of times people either put most of their, their their resources, their money, into either fitness or into dieting, but they don't do them both together. And that's one of our concepts is that in our program, we take care of the fitness part as well as the nutritional part. We don't let that go without, you know, each other. Um, so that's one part, you know, you can't go to the gym and expect to lose weight without having the, the nutritional management in place too. And just the same, you can't do the nutritional management, lose all the weight, and then not have exercise as part of your, you know, part of your regimen. Uh, other things are, as you know, the processing of our foods. That's a fact. I mean, it's not the only thing, uh, but it is changing. I mean, we're not getting enough nutrients. We know that not people aren't getting as many servings of fruits and vegetables that they need. These are the nutrients that are driving the chemical reactions in our body. Um, so, you know, we, you know, trying to, again, moderation, you know, getting people to understand that processed foods do make a difference. And the way they're making them and the amount of sweeteners and, and additives our body doesn't know how to react the same to just raw foods, so that's a big problem. Is you're, if you're if that's the main component of your diet, you know you're not going to be able to. Re your body's not going to react the same, and when it doesn't react the same, it creates inflammation. And we listen to our our patients when they come in, and we ask them why they failed other programs. And a lot of times, it's just too complex. It's they don't get any wiggle room. You know, they basically are told you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, you got to add points. You got to start reading labels. So our program's a little bit more sensible in the sense that you don't have to, you know, read all these labels. We, we, we can't make people into nutritional experts. And the manufacturers have figured this out. They know how to take the labels on, on the back of products and they talk about how many servings. Or, I mean, you really have to understand nutrition to know how many servings equal, equal how many carbohydrates, how much fat, and it really confuses people. Uh, and eventually they try to keep up with it. They try to take all their logs and track their points and everything. But eventually they just they, they miss a few days and then going back seems a lot harder than just stopping. And so it, simplicity is a, a really big focus of ours is to just make it a simple program, a simple approach, uh, not trying to make everybody nutritional experts. They have to know the basics, but um, if you can kind of get into a rhythm that's more of a lifestyle program, some of these things aren't as important. Is yo-yo dieting bad for your body? Oh yeah, it is. And, and you know, some of the experts are saying that yo-yo dieting might even be worse than maintaining a overweight status. And uh, I don't want to approach it that way, but yeah, I mean, that's what most of America does. They'll go and do a program for 30 to 60 days. They lose some weight. They figure out that uh, maybe I can do this on my own. They don't have the fitness in. They don't have the education. They go ahead and go off. And next thing you know, they're back doing their old habits and they gain their weight back. And then they go back again. Sometimes it's seasonal. Um, but yo-yo dieting is the way most people diet. You know, this, one of the stats is about 66% of the population is always on a diet. And that basically means diet for a few days, skip some meals, lose five pounds, gain five pounds. And you know, that goes up to 20 and 30 pound shifts. And unfortunately, we know there is no magic pill. It all is, uh, it's, it's learning and finding the easiest way for you to live in moderation and live balanced. There's some things you might have to give up if you can't control them, but ultimately it's just moderation. It's learning how to manage it. And so, you know, I mean, everyone wants to look good. And if there was that pill, everyone's looking for it. Um, but obviously it's not there. It's never going to be there. And if they do find it, likely it's not the right, right way to go anyway. It can't be a healthy option if it's just something you can do without actually doing the things you know you have to do. Somehow, yeah, outside or outwardly, you might look really well, but what it's doing inside is probably gonna be uh, worse for you. So there is really, I mean, we're really trying to get people to understand that it is not a large commitment and there is an easy way to do it without looking for these real aggressive treatments or looking for these new therapies. I mean, the pharmaceutical industry has all these medicines for weight management that are due to come out and they're always looking for different pills that 
could act as that, you know, that magic pill. But unfortunately, there is none. I mean, they've been out there for years, and as you see, our statistics are still getting worse. So the quote-unquote magic pills out there, but yet we know it's not working. So they just have to understand that they're going to have to move in a different direction and actually try to become, you know, make this a lifestyle, or they're just going to be chasing that magic pill. Do you think obesity rates are on the rise, and how bad are they? Well, the the statistics are very gloom. I mean, it, when you look at uh, where they think we're going to be in 2020. I mean, they're predicting that we're going to get close to, you know, in the high 80s to low 90s as far as percent of American adults being over their ideal weight or obese. And one of the fastest growing sec sectors of obesity is our children. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very scary. I mean, when you're getting even our children are being diagnosed with disease faster than they ever have. The nice thing, though, you know, to end, end on a positive note is that we are seeing a trend where people are trying to now take a little bit more responsibility for their health. Uh, which is a neat thing, uh, but I think that they need to take a little bit more better look at what they're doing. Like I said, they need to be the biggest advocate of their health, uh, but it is, it is a very scary statistic. Uh, society's health right now is at a very scary point. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're happy about our programs just because there are this influx of, of people coming in now saying, okay, I'm done. So we know that if you asked an average patient saying, hey, write down what you should be eating every day and what you should be doing, most people can do that. It's obviously, it's taking that and putting it and educating them to put that into a position where uh, it's balance and it's moderation and it's a lifestyle. So we do tell people what they shouldn't eat and what they should eat, but we do it a little bit differently to where we say, well, let's just focus on what you should eat during this period and then allow them some time to eat some of the foods that they really like. Because if you don't give wiggle room, uh, if you don't look at this as moderation and balance, nobody's gonna succeed. You really have to, you can't tell people they can never eat something. Uh, you can't tell them that they can't have a glass of wine, they can't have a snack one time. You have to really be, build that into a, a program that makes sense to them and that's achievable. And, uh, and that's the only way we find success is that you have to get them to understand that we're not taking away everything from them, that we're actually just helping them you, you know, get more control over their eating instead of letting eating control them. will return in just a moment.